welcome to this quick demo of the new mobile access feature that shipped with Access Manager 4.2. What this feature does is it allows any user with a mobile device, uh, an iOS, Android device, to gain access to uh, Access Manager protected resources or federated resources. In terms of the configuration, it's fairly straightforward. This new section of the configuration is available with the 4.2 UI. You'd go into the mobile access piece, and here what you do is you enable it. You typically enable it. Now, in a production environment, you typically have one cluster. It may be that you have multiple IDP clusters, and what you can do is you can enable it on a per IDP cluster basis. And that means that uh, any of the federated resources or protected resources that are tied to that access or to this IDP cluster would become available via the mobile access. In terms of configuration, uh, you have a device display name, and this is just the uh, display name that will be available in the mobile application when the user logs in and gets access to the various applications that we've configured. Uh, the roles field here defines what role is required for a user to register their mobile device. So if a user has this particular role, then they'll be able to go in, download the mobile device, and log into the identity server to get access to the protected resources. If they don't, they won't even be able to go and register the, the, the devices there. Uh, the mobile device registration contract, this is the contract that will get that the user will execute at registration stage where they'll be prompted for their credentials. Now there's only two examples, two uh, examples here: secure name password form and name password form. Uh, typically, default would be secure name password form. So again, when a user launches uh, the mobile access piece, registers the device, they're going to be asked for their credentials, and essentially it will be uh, name password over SSL. The method satisfied by mobile authentication. So when a user is authenticated and gets a list of protected resources in the application, which we'll see later on, um, the user will satisfy the following methods. So if you have a protected resource, if you have a list of protected resources that are protected by any of these uh, methods, then uh, you should be able to single sign on to that backend application. If, for example, we were to remove secure name password form here and you had a protected resource on the access gateway that was secured with the secure name password form contract, that user would be prompted for their credentials again. So this is just uh, to allow the single sign-on to the various uh, back-end applications. The password prompt, this defines how long uh, the, the token. So basically, when a user registers, uh, they get access to a, a, a no-auth token, uh, uh, an access token, and a refresh token. This 365 days defines the length of the refresh token. So basically... Um, it means that a user will be able to log in without having to reprovide the credentials for 365 days, after which point the user, when accessing an application, will be asked to re-enter their credentials. And on the pin prompt, this defines whether or not you want a user, when they launch the mobile access app on their Android or iOS device, whether they want to be prompted for a pin. And again, each of these, you can drop this or enable, disable this, and there's a trade-off between security and ease of use. So we'll just save that, and that is essentially all we need to do um, in terms of the device registration. The next stage is defining an app mark. Now, in an app mark, I've already got a default app mark here. This is just a, a bookmark. So when I log in uh, using my mobile access and I register, uh, after registering, I should only see one particular uh, link there. And it'll be, if I click on that link, it's simply going to take me, let's take a look at it. It's going to take me to, it's a bookmark, and it's going to take me to www.netiq.com. So let's go and we'll add a bookmark ourselves. Uh, so we click the plus button here. And now I'm going to have, uh, well, I'm going to set up two. I'm going to set up simple SAML, uh, which is a SAML SP that I have on that box. So I'll just put a simple SAML here, uh, typo. And then I can define what roles, what user roles do I need in order to be able to see this particular app mark. So this is post authentication on the mobile access where I actually see a list of available applications. So I can actually restrict access to certain applications based on a role. So for this one here, I'm just not gonna put in a role here. 
Uh, now this here is simple, simple SAML, which is a service provider. So I'm going to click on service provider here and it'll give me a list of service providers that I have set up on my identity server. So in here I have uh, got Office 365, SAML, Simplicity, and here's my simple SAML app. And there is the target URL that it picks up from that uh, particular IDP SAML configuration. So now I can also define what, how I want that enabled. So for example, do I want to enable it simply for desktops or also for iOS devices and Android devices? In this case here, I'm going to enable it for all. I can click on the iOS devices and I can select a different image if I want. Uh, so again, it's a mobile device, so it may be that the, the default image is actually too large to display in that. Um, speaking of which, let me just go in and change. I've actually imported a simple SAML image over here. So there we go. And that's my simple SAML setup. Literally, that is all I need to do to enable it. And again, you've noticed that there is no role. So basically, every user should be able to access that. Now, let me create one for a protected resource. So I'm going to call it, uh, I have a, a portal PR. Uh, portal PR. And again, I'll keep the roles free for the time being. I'm just going to, I'll select and the image that I want there. And now when I select the option service provider, I should get a list of the available, ser oh, I beg your pardon, uh, protected resource. I should get a list of the access gateway protected resources. So it picks up my AG cluster, my reverse proxy service, the actual proxy service itself, and I have a number of protected resources. So for example, I should go down here. I'll probably have a, a portal protected resource down here. And there is my list of URLs here. So I can actually select this URL. And again, as in the previous case, what I can do is I can select, uh, do I want to enable it for desktops, iOS devices, and Android devices, etc. So now I've actually got my uh, three app marks enabled. So now let's take a look at uh, how we go about setting up the mobile piece. So actually, before I do that, one last thing that I want to talk about here is in terms of branding. So the user branding down here allows you to change the look and feel. So for example, this is the default look and feel that, uh, that um, is displayed with the shipping 4.2 box, but you can go and change this. You can make it a, a, a green background, not so nice there, and maybe a red uh, right background. So, now let's take a look at what needs to be done on the client or the mobile side. So we'll go in, we'll search for the NetIQ mobile access application, and we select the option to download the application. After downloading the application, we can open it, and we will need to accept the license agreement and then just add or register the device. So in here, we put the base URL of the IDP server. In my case, it's uh, S bnts com. Now, when I click register here, it's going to ask me to authenticate using the contract that I defined on the mobile access configuration. So it'll be secure name password form. And there we go, we get asked for the registration process. So NCash show. and it's going to validate the credentials, hopefully successfully. And because I'm accessing it for the first time and I have the PIN code enabled, I'm prompted for a, an initial PIN code. And this is the PIN code or the passcode that's gonna to need to be entered every time you launch your application. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And hopefully what we'll see now is we'll see the app marks that are available for this particular user. So we have the NetIQ Home, that's the bookmark, the Portal PR, which is the protected resource, and the Simple SAML, which is the SAML2 uh, connector. So if I just click on the SAML2 connector, it's gonna send uh, an IDP initiated request over to the NAM IDP server and generate an assertion to send over to the SP. And in there we get the attributes and the authentication information that the IDP server has generated. Thank mm -hmm. you.